All right, we are on the bottom of Chav Beis Amad Beis. We are learning that Chav Gimel today. Here we go. Zakel Gemishna. If someone were to make a sukkah on the top of a tree, I'm sorry, on the top of a wagon. I bereisha on the top of a boat. Kesheira. Those are both kasher and you can even go in on yamtif. Yeah. Rashi says the Chiddush is of the Agola is that even though it's, it moves, um, and even though on a boat this thing can get uh, blown away, it is still kosher. Why? Because diras aray is sagi. It's enough to have a diras aray. Great. You can go on Nanta because there's no problem of, uh, there's no issues going on on a wagon or uh, on a boat on Shabbos. Okay. Um, leaving on a boat on Shabbos is a problem of Trum. We don't want going on a boat. Okay, going into the in, going into the sukkah that's on a boat. If you're on the boat, it's for sure not a problem. Okay, Bereisha Elam, What about going onto a sukkah that's in your tree? Now, obviously, it's not um, being covered by the branches of your tree. It's a kosher sukkah, but it's on a tree. or it's on a camel. So it's a, it's got the dimensions, the correct dimensions. Can you go in that on Shab? Uh, it's uh, is that a kosher sukkah? And the answer is kishera. The sukkah is kosher, but ain't elam yatev. But you can't go into it on because Chazal made a gezera by climbing trees and going on the camels on Shabbos or yantif. Um Now, what if my sukkah is semi-supported by trees? Okay, so that means my walls, my floor are support. My sukkah is supported by two trees um, and one uh, man made wall, or it's um, yeah, that sukkah is kasher in but you can't go into it on Yantif. Again, uh, we'll, let's just finish the mission. But if there were three walls and the support is all coming, be the Adam, and there's one wall that's also coming from a tree, that's Kesher, and you can even go on to Nayantif. This is the rule. If you can take away the tree and the circle will remain standing, you can go into it on Yantif. Right? The issue is that you're not allowed to be Mishamish Be'ilan, you can't use a tree. Same way you can't hang, I mean, you can hang a uh, um, a hammock between two trees, but if it's wrapped around the tree, you can't go into the hammock on Shabbos. So if you want to have a hammock for Shabbos usage, you need to put a screw into the tree and hang it from the screw. You can't wrap the, um, you can't wrap the string around the, the tree. Um, so the same thing, you can't be mishamish be'ilon, and therefore, if the sukkah is being supported by the tree, you can't go in it on yantif. So like the Mishnah, money must listen. Who's the town of our Mishnah who says that you can go onto a, you can have a sukkah on top of a boat? Says the Gemara, Rabbi Akivi. It's a hey, look at Rabbi Akivi. The Tanya we learned in the brights. Oh, you made a sukkah on, it, on top of a boat. No good. Rabbi Akiva says it's kosher. Ma'i said there was a story Rabbi Akiva. They were coming and they were on a, traveling on a boat together. Amad Rabbi Akiva us a sukkah. So Rabbi Akiva said, "No, let's make a sukkah." The Rosh Hashanah on the top of the boat. The Marcha the next day, Nashva Ruach Akrasa. Wind came and blew the uh, sukkah down. Amr Rabbi Gamliel. So Gamliel said to Rabbi Akiva, "He says, Akiva, hechen sukkascha. Akiva, where's your where's your sukkah?" So Abaya clarifies here. Kuli alma hecha the ina yechelam ibruach mitzuya the abasha like klomi. If you have a sukkah that cannot stand to a regular wind that's on the yabasha, if your sukkah can't stand in regular winds, then it is not a sukkah. Rashi says it's not even a diras arai. It's a garnishvart. Okay, yechel alam ibisha ina mitzuya the abasha, and if your sukkah can withstand. Winds that are not regular winds on dry land. Root Rashi says is the same as the regular wind biyam. Then kuli amalei pligit to keshira, and that would be fine as well. If you have a sukkah that's meant to, you know, that can withstand the regular wind blowing on the ocean, that is fine. Ki pligi, me Rabbi Gamliel would agree to that as well. Ki pligi. So what's the machlekes? B'di yachayalame b'rach mitzuyah di abasha. 
it's, it's a good sukkah if it would be on dry land. But it's not strong enough to withstand the regular winds of the sea. So here we go. Mil saver sukkah diras kavabinon. The kibnei yechalami beruch mitzuyah the yam loiklomi. You need to be able to withstand the, the situation that you're in, says Rabbi Gamliel. The kibnei saver sukkah diras arai beinan. It says you know it doesn't have to be such a fine structure. The kibnei yechalami beruch mitzuyah the yabasha. And since if it was on dry land, you'd be able to stand. It is kasher. It's kasher. I'm like what? What kind of sense does that make, Rabbi Akiva? Your sukkah is not on dry land. Your sukkah is on a boat. So who cares that it's able to it's able to withstand um, uh, the uh, the winds uh, at uh, on dry land? But it's it's not on dry land. It's on a boat. That's a kasha that Achreinim deal with. Um, this was MS says something, and uh, somebody else says something. I, I didn't really get them. The briskarav has a vart. It doesn't work in Rashi, but he says a vart like this. He says that there's an, you need a din mechitza. Mechitza, to, you, need, you need to have a sukkah has to have a mechitza. So what gives something a din mechitza? What gives it a, that we can consider something mechitza? Well, we don't, you're not usually on, on, on a boat uh, at sea. So if it has a din mechitza, that a din mechitza is something which can withstand the normal wind at, at, uh, here. Okay, so this has a din of mechitza, it's considered a mechitza. I mean that all you need is a diras arai. Um, so then, since your walls have a din machitza, then your circle will be kosher. That's Rabbi Akiva's reasoning. And Rabbi Mill is like, well, no, you got to be able to, it needs to be a diras keva. That means we take into account where it is. And if it's beyam, it's not going to be good, even though it could withstand a regular wind. Okay. Um, we are holding at the two dots on Chav Gimel Amid Aleph. Oi al Gabi Gamal Vechulei. So, says the Gemara, Masis and Mani, who is the town of this mission that says you can make a, um, you can make a sukkah on a animal? Says the Gemara, Reb Meir, this is Reb Meir. Um, we're in the middle of Chav Gimel Medalf. The town, is the Gosh Agave Behima. If someone were to make a sukkah on top of an animal, Reb Meir Machshir, Reb Yehuda Poisson. Reb Meir says that is kosher, and Buda says that is not kosher, that is possible. So, for example, my time, Reb Yehuda, what's, what's wrong with the sukkah that's on the animal? Amar Kra, he says, well, listen, it's a possible. The possible says you need to have a sukkah that's ru'uya, that's fit to use for all seven days. Chag HaSukkah is tasel chashiva zyamim. Sukkah haru'uya l'shiva. Shema sukkah. A sukkah which is fit to be used all seven days of the holiday. That's a sukkah. Sukkah she'en re'u l'shiva. But a sukkah which is not fit to be used for all seven days is like Shema sukkah. And since Chazal said that you can't go onto your animal on sukkahs, I can't sit on an animal on yantiv, so then it's not ru'u yilashiva. It's not fit for, to be used for seven days, and therefore it's puzzle. Shmak, good word, Rabbi Yehuda. Reb Meir, ah, Reb Meir, lachay, Reb Yehuda saying good. Hanami, one second, Reb Meir, Reb Meir says one second. Let's go, you, yeah. You need a sukkah that's ru'u yilashiva, but how ro'i do you need it? How fit? Is it enough if it's biblically fit? Or does it have to be midrabanan fit as well? Being that you tell me a din da'iraisa, that means the the the, the, um, the Torah says it needs to be fit for all seven days. Well, a sukkah on top of an animal mid is fit to you for use all seven days. You're right. The rabbanon came along and said you can't use it, but mid is fit, and therefore that's considered fit. That's a very interesting machlokes here. Rabbi Yehai Nami mid deraisa machasachazia mid this is fit to use. Rabbanon with the gazra rabbanon said you can't use it. So this is a, a very long shemach like you say between Reb Meir and the Chachamim, or Reb Meir and Reb Yehuda. How do you view what the Torah um, is answering something? The Torah is considering something fit to use. Well, what did the, what did the Torah mean when it said fit? Did it mean on a biblical level or on a practical level? Right? Reb Meir is saying, listen, practically you can't use this. I don't care why. Rabban Der Isa Lamaisa, it's not fit for use. And the Reb Reb Meir is saying, no, it's got to be. Not fit for use uh, because of the biblically it's not fit for use. Okay. Now that's talking about using your so you, uh, building the uh, sukkah on the animal. So it's an issue of going into the sukkah. What about if I use an animal as a wall of my sukkah? Okay. So I have I don't know I got I got two walls up and then I have Betsy my cow who you know is happy to stay fit, stay not to move for seven days. So I put it as the, as the third wall. So is that okay? Can I have an animal as a wall, my sukkah? 
Says the Gemara, Asa lebehima doifin. I used an animal as a wall of my sukkah. Reb Meir Paisa, Reb Yudim Achshi. Why is that? Reb Meir Meir Oimer. Meir said, Kol Dav Shish Beirachain. Anything that's alive, ain't ice and ice. Loy doifin lesukkah. You can't make it as a wall of the sukkah. Loy lechi lemavu. You can't use it as your lechi, your uh, your hecker, your vertical pole um, at the end of your mavui. Loy pasin lebi rice. You can't use it as one of your demudin uh, around your well. Remember, around the well, they were matir making uh, a right angled amas corners around the well. Um, so you can't use it as one of those corners. You can't use an animal, something with the ruachayim in it. The loy goyla la kever. You can't use it as a goyla for the kever. What's a goyla? So three opinions. Rashi says a goylel is the cover of the arun. So if you didn't have a cover for your casket, um, you can't use a live animal. Yeah, cows wouldn't be a good idea, but something smaller maybe, you can't use it. Um, uh, the Rabbeinu, I'm sorry, Tesis learns that the goylel was actually what you used to cover the grave, to cl- cover the hole was the goylel. Um um, the Ritva says that they're not necessarily arguing. Uh, the point is that it's the cover of a, uh, it's the cover of the, it's covering the mace. Rashi is talking about we used a casket, a, an aron, so therefore this would be the cover of that aron. And this is, is talking where you didn't use an aron, you put the body directly in the ground, and therefore you're covering the hole with this goyle. Um Rabbeinu Tam says that the goyle is the matseva. Okay, Vinishvi, Reb Meir says you cannot use something that's alive for the goylo. Now, Mishun Reb Yisai Luli, I remember they said then Reb Yisai Luli, Afin Kaisen Lo Gitei Nashim, you wouldn't be allowed to write a get on an animal and then give a, your wife the animal. That wouldn't work either. Now, let's understand what's pshat. Why can't you use a ruach Let's talk about the wall of our sukkah. My time is Reb Meir. What's the pshat? What's the issue? So Abay Amar Abay says, you know what the issue is? Shema Tamas. We're worried that if it's alive and it's 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 now it's ten tvachim high, but once it dies, it's not going to be ten tvachim high anymore. So that's what we're concerned about. Rabzeira Amar Shema Tivrach. Now the concern is that it's not going to stay there. It's going to run away, and you're not going to have a sukkah. Okay. So the one says, but pill kasher. If I got a large pill, it's an elephant, and it's tied up. So kuli amalei pligi. That's that's everybody would agree that that would be okay. The inami mice, even if it died and it you know killed over, it's still going to be ten tefachim high. Yesh ben lasa yud ki pligi be pil she Okay, we are about an elephant that's not tied up. Lamanda amr shematamos. If the concern is that it's going to die, so then lechashin, it's not an issue here because it's a pill. So even if it dies, you'll still be covered. Well, here it's not tied up. So then Hashim, we're concerned it's going to run away. Well, the man's like, what's like? If you're concerned that animals are going to die, then why wouldn't you be concerned that it's going to run away? I heard that's more probable. Okay, you're right. So if you have an elephant that's not tied up, everybody agrees that we're going to have a problem because um, it may run away. What about a regular animal that's tied up? Well, if the concern is that it's going to die, well, there's a problem because if it dies, you're not going to have a ten tefach wall anymore. More. If the concern is it's going to run away, well, this thing's tied up, so it's not going anywhere. Okay. Well, what about the other way? Why aren't you concerned that it's going to die? If you're concerned it's going to run away, why aren't you concerned it's going to die? This is Misa Leshkicha. Misa is not that common, meaning it happens, but it, well, why, why should I can be concerned now that it's going to die? You know, it'll die when it has to die, but I don't have to be concerned for that. Running away is a common place. Animals run away, and therefore he's concerned for that. Okay, good. Now we have some other issues using an animal as your wall. Again, so even according to Reb, um, Reb Yehuda, who says you could use a wall, or in a situation, according to Reb Meir, where it's not going to run away, and even if it dies, you'll be okay. What about Rav Chadabaini Baini? What about the space between its legs? Things can run in there. Maybe that should be, that's not Mavsa, assuming it's more than three Tzvachim. Smar says, the Avalei Behutz Now you put up some, some type of a wall in between its legs. You put up some material in between its legs. 
Vidilma Rava, what if it squats? Um, and that's going to squash that, and then it's going to be lower than 10 Tvachim. So it's going to be the Misicha Ba'ashli Mila'el. All right, we're talking about you, you're hanging, the animal is being supported by some strings from above, so therefore it can't squat. Well, if that's the case, Ulaman the Amrak Zir Shema Thomas, Nami, Naha Misicha Ba'ashli Mila'el. If we're talking about where you tied it up, from above, and even if it died, it's not going to turn. It's not going to. It's not going to go anywhere. Where it says, "Well, here's our issue. The issue is, what happens if I have my sukkah is ten tefachim high, okay, and my animal is a little more than seven tefachim tall? So that would be loved, and I'd be fine. The problem is that if it dies, it's even if it doesn't fall, it's going to shrink a little bit. They keep in the ma'isa kavza. It uh, it shrinks a bit, and therefore v'lav adaita. You're not going to notice it, and you're not going to end up having a sukkah, um, and that'll be the concern. Okay, that's the issues with using a balchai as an animal. Now we had a machlekes of Reb Meir and Reb Yehuda whether we're chayish lamisa according to Abaye. Abaye understood the machlekes between Reb Shimon and Reb Meir and Reb Yehuda whether you can use a balchai for a day from for sukkah is the odue. Are we concerned that this animal will die? Says the Gemara, Umi Amr Abai, Reb Meir Chayish Lamisa, Reb Yudu Loi Chayish. Abai, did you really say that Reb Meir is the one that's been Chayish Lamisa? And that's why he puzzles, he invalidates a wall that is uh, made of a, of a, a uh, an animal. And Reb Yehuda is not concerned for Misa, and that's why he's Machshut. We have a problem because we learned the opposite. Well, tonight we learned in the mission. Bas Yisrael Shinisis Lakain. Um, a, a fine Jewish girl who's married to a Kain. And her husband went away. So, she can continue eating chuma because she's only allowed to eat chuma because she's married to a kain. Once the kain, if he were to die, then she wouldn't be allowed to eat chuma anymore. But you can assume he's alive. Okay, we ask this to you. The guy says to his wife, listen, I'm going away. I don't want to leave you as a um, as a um, Shemeris Yavam, because we don't have any kids, and if uh, I die, then you'll have to, to get you'll have to either get Yivam or Chalitza. So here I'm giving you a get, and it should be Chal an hour before I die. Okay, well that's wonderful, but now we're always concerned that you may die, and therefore, uh, or at least you may die in an hour. So therefore, um, she's a little bit stuck, at least in terms of eating Truma. Truma. She's not allowed to eat any truma. Immediately, from the time he gave her the get, he's not, she's not allowed to eat truma. So we have a steer here. That mission is assuming you have to be chayish, that the guy's going to die. The mission that says that you go to Medina Sayyam, you don't have to assume your husband's dead. So which one is it? Do we assume the guy's dying, or do we assume that he's alive? Amar Abai, like Hash, it's not a steer. Harab Meir, Harab Yehuda. Now who's who? Listen to what Abai says. Harab Meir, Deloi Chayish Lamisa. That's the First shita that says you can continue eating truma and ha Reb Yehuda the Chayish Lamisa and the one who says that you are not allowed to eat truma is because you have to like Reb Yehuda who is excuse me concerned he's Chayish that maybe the husband will die so and now why does Reb Meir say it like that because we have another brisa Titania Halakayachayim if a guy purchases wine from a kusi kusi was considered at that point worse than the Aretz so it wasn't even considered demai. Your wine, it was mamish considered like teva, like nothing was taken off of it. So Aymer, he has to say, Shnei Lugan Shani Asad Lahafrish. So he, it's it's Shabbos, so he can't actually be mafresh it, or he doesn't have any tar dika kalem to be mafresh the truma. So he's going to do what's called the kerishim, he's going to say it, and he's assuming what we call yesh brera, that what I do, what I, um, that I could say things now and it could take effect, it'll take effect later, even though I don't actually, I'm not only mafresh it later, meaning. I'm going to drink this, this barrel of wine, and after Shabbos, when I find Tar Kalim, then I'll put the the the, the, um, the wine in, in I'll, I'll take the truma. Or whatever is left will be the truma. So that means Yesh Breira, I can, um, whatever I, I, I uh, I'm going to do something now, and it's a, uh, even though the, 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 something has an effect now, even though it's not going to be uh, clarified until later. So, Two lugan that I will end up being mavish is going to be truma, um, and asara me'aser, and I'm um, sorry, asara 
Assume there, there are 10 whatever's here. So a tenth of it is going to be Meiser, Rishon, and Tisha is going to be Meiser Shani. Um, Umechal, and he's, he, he makes, uh, he does a, a pidgin for Meiser uh, Shani. Vesheisa, and then he can drink mad immediately. This is Rabbi Meir's opinion. Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehoisi, and Rabbi Shimon Oyser, they ask for this. Why? Rashi says, because they're concerned that maybe you're, maybe this barrel is going to pop and break or crack, and you won't be left with any wine left. So therefore, we're concerned Shem Yibaka. Well, if you're concerned Shem Yibaka, then certainly you'd be concerned that a person would die. So again, here you have Rabbi Yehuda being Chayesh Le Misa. So that is why Abaye said that Rabbi Yehuda is Chayesh Le Misa, and Rabbi Meir is not Chayesh Le Misa. And that's a steer to what we said above on Rav Chav Gimel Bar Alav, where Rabbi said that Reb Meir was machshir the sukkah. I'm sorry, Reb Meir passed the sukkah with a balchai because he's chayish to misa. Reb Yehuda was machshir because he's not chayish to misa. So we have a stira in Abai. The Gemara answers Epoch. We got to switch it around. That Reb Meir is the one that's chayish to misa. Reb Yehuda loy chayish to misa. And we will detain it like we learned in a sukkah meaning for care. We have to say, say it the other way, meaning the two brises that were steers to each other, so that, I, that, that Abai said originally, Reb Meir was the one who was not Chayesh, let me say, and Reb Yudha was, switch it around. And the reason is because we have a brisa here that says that Reb Meir is Asalu the Tanya, Asalu Be'em of Doifen L'Sukkah, Reb Meir Pesach, Reb Yudha Machshir. So you see that there is a, that Reb Meir is Chayesh, let me say, and Reb Yudha is not. All right, we will continue with Ezra Hashem Yisbarach tomorrow. Have a wonderful Shabbos Kodesh.